you can imagine how she has survived. She got all her babies unfinished. And uh, this girl was just coming for a normal checkup, mm. a pap smear. Mm. Then the attendant tells her, that, look, have you ever noticed you have this and this and this? Mm. Yeah. And then say, please go for a checkup. Yes. Yeah. So th this is what happens. Mm. Unlike urine. Unlike people and like urine leakage. Urine leakage yes. Because urine mm. leaks continuously. Mm. It does leak continuously. So you cannot stop it. Yes. It will wet your clothes mm. and it becomes smelly if you yes. stop drinking. Yes. So it will keep you moving away from And there are actually women who've actually had the urine as well for many years. Yeah. Yes. Very but Very you'll you'll find that the majority of them is because financially they are not able yes. or two, they don't know where they can get help mm. and three, they are dismissed so they don't hear what that, uh, such a service is available mm. so unless nowadays we are lucky because we have radios in the, our telephones mm. the, so the, those who are in the village can actually listen to radio mm. using their phones yes and can get information very easily. Yes. But traditionally, we were kept away, yes. and uh, you are isolated, mm. nobody talks to you, wants to share with you. Mm. So eventually you don't get information. Yes, 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 sadly. Very sad for the women, especially who are in the marginalized areas where they can access um, proper health care. And also very unfortunate for those who are not aware, who, can, who don't know what exactly it is and how, you know. how, they, yeah, how they can do it. Others, yes. interestingly, have sought help, yes. but they didn't get it. They didn't get it. Maybe try it once, twice, three times, yes. and then they realize it's not being sorted out, mm. or nobody knows how to sort it mm. out. The lady who was in the last episode, in, 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 my, in, in my episodes, one of my episodes, was talking about having living with it for 20 years, and at some point, after 10 years, he, she consulted a doctor, just a doctor, and you know, he was, she was just told, you know, that's okay, it's a normal, it's, there's nothing wrong, her, her, she's fine, and she should just go on with her life. A normal life. Yeah, so most people are not misdiagnosed. That happens, that happens. Misdiagnosis again is common yes. because uh, the, the healthcare worker is either neighbor or doesn't know how to examine yes. and make a diagnosis. Mm. So the women are actually dismissed. Mm. Some of them even don't have a fistula in the first place. Yeah. Okay, you can see leak urine without having a fistula. Mm. And um, if the healthcare worker is not able to examine and make a diagnosis of a fistula, mm. you, you are likely to be dismissed because otherwise, mm. if they tell you uh, there's a fistula, the next question they can't answer, mm. where do I go for help? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Harry. And I want to know, are there preventive measures? Are there, for our viewers who are watching this episode, are there preventive measures so that we stop or we avoid or we have low cases of fistula? The thing is, what you should know yes. is fistula, and the fistulas, especially related to childbirth, yes. are wholly pre preventable. They are fully preventable. That's why you don't get them in New York or, or London, mm. yeah, mm. because they are wholly preventable. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and those th few that are unfortunate to develop a fistula yes. after childbirth mm. are corrected. Immediately. immediately. And so the women there are not are going to undergo the consequences of leakage of urine or stool mm. after childbirth. Yeah. Yeah? Like I said, it's the worst thing that can ever happen to a human yeah, being. Yeah. 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 And um, in our setup, unfortunately, is that one majority, or nowadays it's better, but it used to be majority of our women, mm. over 60 percent were delivering at home. Yes, true. Yeah, yeah. under the, the traditional birth attendants. Yes. And then only a few reached the hospital. Mm. Much of what we think is our, our instance mm. uh, or the prevalence, mm of fistula is best at the hospital level. Yes. The women we come across at the hospital level. Mm. And if few women are delivering in hospital, mm. you can imagine uh, how many yeah, yeah. are delivering outside the hospital. Wow. It's 
sadly, very sad. So, so you can give an impression, and that's a calculation that was given, that for every uh, every uh, woman that is injured, injured yes. yeah, mm -hmm. there are third more that have been, or every woman that dies, there are third more that have been injured. For every woman that dies, there's a third yeah. that have been injured. Yeah. The third more are have been injured, have been injured. Yeah. Okay, they may not have a fistula, yeah. but uh, they have been injured during childbirth. Mm. So then if you do that mathematics, then it becomes a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, the last uh, estimation was done in 2015, mm. uh, based on um, the uh, women deliveries up to a thousand. Yeah. And in, probably in Kenya, you would estimate that maybe about 13,000 mm. mm. women yes. are getting uh, fistula. What? Uh, say that, doctor, say that again. <laughs> very sad, very sad. How many per year? Per year? How many get fistula per About year? 13,000. 13,000. That's in Kenya? In Kenya alone. Oh my God. Based on our... 13,000 women. Guys, listen to that. 13,000 women in every year are getting fistula in Kenya. It's very sad. Actually, that's very sad, and um, and I really hope that they can be women can you know we can reach out to these women, and you know we can our stakeholders, other stakeholders can also reach out and ensure that they get treatment. So that's true. What, what, and what, uh, what, unfortunately, we are able to capture very little in terms of treatment. Yeah, very few. So we still have a backlog of women waiting a backlog. a year, yeah. uh, waiting in the villages, waiting yeah. for an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, that's what's happening in Kenya. Yeah. Actually, when, when I came for screening in Kenyatta Hospital that time, huh, there were many women, there were many women queuing. Do, can I assume that all those women who were queuing in Kenyatta, over almost so those were many, were really many, huh? all those women had, um, after screening, they were, they were screened and you know, they diagnosed with fistula, but others had other conditions. Okay, the, my, you see the thing is when we send out word, mm. it's difficult to say those who have fistula come forward. Oh, okay. It's very difficult. Mm. So we use the connotation like this. Uh, those who are unable to control urine mm. or a stool yes. come forward. Yes. Mm. The majority of them actually have a fistula. Mm -hmm. But a few of them may have other reasons why they have um, Though they are unable to control urine or stool. Mm. So majority have fistula? Yes. Yeah. Then, um, Dr. from a doctor's perspective, just take us through the healing process, huh? healing process of fistula, because even after surgery, or even before and after, the, the, a patient would be, of course, having the, phys the physical healing that needs to be done and also the mental part, the mental health of a patient. Because that, for me, Dr. I would say that the, the mental part took years. It was a process. I mean, it, it, by the time I can actually speak, say I have fistula and be confident, confident about it, it took me a while and, and, and I'm fine now. So from your doctor's point of view, what would you tell us? Yeah, it's good you have mentioned that because in the year 2003, mm -hmm. when the Minister of Health brought together the stakeholders yes. and we were thinking about how should we treat uh, fistula when it comes to us, mm -hmm. And uh, one of the biggest places that has lacked, biggest uh, uh, area that has lacked uh, strategy and concern mm. has been the mental part. Yes. Mm. Uh, even though during the formation of a team, mm. a fistula team mm. to visit the hospital, or visit any place of Kenya, mm. it consisted of uh, specialties and uh, of course a surgeon mm. and an anesthetist, mm. a nurse. A nurse. Yes. A theater nurse and a ward nurse. Ward nurse. Mm -hmm. It also consisted of a counselor, a counselor, a physiotherapist, a physiotherapist. and a social, worker. a social worker. Yeah, so you can see what we are looking at. Yeah. These women require rehabilitation. It, it, for sure, they need rehabilitation to ensure they get back to the way they were. They, they have to go back yeah. if you want to discuss success, mm. isn't it? Yes. You can see that they have been damaged mentally. I mean, if you 40 years of running a urine yes. uncontrollably, you need to be assisted. Mm -hmm. So we needed a counsellor mm -hmm. uh, to handle the mental part and of course the team to repair. Mm -hmm. And this is, our, uh, this is what we saw 
should be like a full package when you move. You don't move alone as a surgeon. Because you repair, yes. But closing the fistula is not adequate for rehabilitation or reintegration of that woman. So is that what is happening now? Do we have counselors who are talking to women who have... Uh... We are yet to start a mental department yes. that can actually come in mm. to help with the mental part, yes. which should actually be there. Yeah. Because that's where the damage is worst. So we're hoping that uh, soon we have a mental component that can accompany our teams mm. uh, to help with the, uh, the mental status of this woman. Yes, yes. Wow, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, so we've, uh, basically we have like 13,000 women every year in Kenya who have fistula. An estimate, yeah. Estimate. yeah. Based on the, uh, uh, the death rate, I mean the maternal mortality rate. The maternal mortalities? Right. Wow, thank you so much for that information, Dr. Tari. So would, as you look at that camera, tell, can you share with a woman right out there who needs to, who is probably suspecting that she has fistula and she doesn't know where to reach out or who to reach out to just to encourage someone who may be suffering from fistula? Now we are lucky, at least we created awareness yes. in the whole of Kenya mm -hmm. and probably in the whole of East Africa too. Uh, we, through the camps that we used to go out, through the messaging that we used to go out, through radio presentations and what are print media mm. and everything, mm. we have managed to create one thing called awareness, awareness for people to know where to go if they have a problem. And we have several centers in Kenya. Yes. Initially, it used to be only Kenyatta National Hospital and people will have to move from all parts of Kenya and sometimes East Africa mm. to come to Nairobi to have a fistula repair, yeah. it no longer, uh, uh, they can now access, mm. I mean, fistula care in the periphery. Mm. And we have regions that mm. can serve. Mm. When you go to um, coast, we have Mombasa, mm. eh, POM, mm. people who have been trained, who can identify a fistula mm. and be able to say, this I can handle, this I must refer. Mm. We have uh, in Western Kenya, we have uh, Eldoret, yes. we have Kit Kitale, mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. we have Kisumo, mm -hmm. yeah, Homa Bay, mm -hmm. Kisi. Kisi. You know, we, uh, so many other places that provide not only in uh, Nairobi and women don't have to travel distances. Mm -hmm. Some of the questions is when you are told go to Kenyatta National Hospital, where is Kenyatta National Hospital? Do you have the money? Mm -hmm. How do you approach? Yes, you don't know. You don't know. So it's much easier to handle it at the village level yeah. or the county level for that matter uh, when it comes up. So we have all these places that can capture yeah. these women who have, uh, uh, who have a fistula. Mm. Uh, and so, and I hope whoever is watching mm. can actually remember what the places I've said, yes. okay, Kitale, Eldoret, the Kainokea is an Eldoret, also in Kisi. Mm. Kisumu, Homa Bay, Kakameka, and Kakameka, the bomb hospital in the uh, in, uh, coast, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. where they can access that service. Yeah, now, in, with, in, this, in the midst of COVID, in, the, in this COVID season where we, we, we don't know when it will end, I don't know what, what, what will happen to our women. What do you think will happen to our women now that there are no camps going on? And as a doctor, what, what what do we do? What do we advise of, uh, uh, those at home who probably think that they have fistula? We have a challenge. Mm. Even though our service is still going on. The services are still going on. But it's under a very limited uh, uh, capacity okay. at the moment. Mm. Because most of the elective surgeries were suspended mm. because of COVID. Mm. And uh, the second challenge that we have mm. is that uh, women are not now delivering in hospital like it had picked up. Yeah, yeah? now yes. they're again delivering in their homes. Yes, yes. Because of fear of ca catching uh, COVID yes. uh, when they could deliver in hospitals. Mm. So that's another challenge that we are facing. So with even the delivery at home, probably even the numbers of fistula patients will increase. Will increase. Oh my. So post COVID, we see a surge in the numbers. Ah, I, uh, mm. I just hope that we don't have to go undergo again uh, going through the camps in the in the whole of uh, Kenya mm. to act for women who would have developed fistula during the COVID uh, period. Mm. 
Yeah. Well, very sad for those women, but yeah, let's hope that COVID will end and life will resume back. Now with curfews also. With curfews, yes. Added on it. Yes. And the lockdowns. And the lockdowns. Women can't access uh, 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 the delivery services that they so require. Uh, and so we compound with that, mm. the mental disruptions, yeah, mental, mental uh, yeah. uh -huh, okay. as well as the family set up disruptions yes. that would happen with COVID, mm. we see as such later on. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ari, for that information. And I am really proud of you, Dr. Ari. Yeah, yeah. Thank you because you're nominated for the UK Awards. <laughs> I'm still so proud about that. Mm. Yeah, for your professionalism, for your resilience you know, for your passion, you know, how you passionately handle your clients and work, in terms of work and delivery, you've done us proud. Yeah, so thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And today we are, we are so grateful, Dr. Ari, for hosting us here at Family Health Clinic in Hurlingham. And um, it's good that you have given us, you know, an insight, a doctor's insight on what fistula is all about and the number of women that are actually suffering from fistula. And Dr. Ari has informed us that there are over 13,000 women every year in Kenya who are suffering from fistula. So guys, uh, spread the word. Inform your friends, inform families, spread that, you know what, your, fam your friend could be suffering from fistula and fistula is treatable, so there's hope. So keep hope alive. Know that it is well. For you who's there and you're suffering from fistula, I, have, I got responses on my inbox. Please check the numbers on your screen. Um, call the radio, room, the radio room for flying doctor services and you'll get um, assisted. God bless you all. Thank you.